So, Plasco Burris, welcome, welcome. to Undisputed. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you. Thanks Thank you. for joining us. So, how did you get involved as a coach for this game? Well, uh, a year ago, I, I did an intern in Arizona yes. Commons with Bruce Arians. Mm -hmm. and I got a phone call from uh, from the NFL PA, the NFL PA to, uh, to to participate in this game, and it's just a great opportunity. I, I think I think what separates the NFL uh, PA collegiate game from from the other bowl games is that. When you have the likes of Daryl Green, uh, Ed Reed, myself, mm -hmm. Andre Johnson, Jackie Slater, some of those coaches that yeah. can have an influence and kind of mentor these guys going with going into the NFL draft, it, it really helps because those other bowl games don't don't have Hall of Fame caliber coaches and and mentors, so it, it's exciting. Do you want to coach? Mm -hmm. Uh. <laughs> it sounded cute <laughs> to, uh, to myself when I, when I really wanted to get into it, but it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work, and I'm, obviously I love the game, but you know, spending a lot of time with my family, you know. Yeah. It's, and it's and not these, these kids today, man, right? Oh, oh my goodness, who you telling? Yeah, <laughs> you telling? yeah but uh, it's, it's it's a great experience for me and and, and all of the guys, and, and seeing some of this great young talent, you know, blossom and and yep. it, and helping those guys fulfill. Uh, to chase a dream and, mm -hmm. and fulfill it, it's good. Right. A lot of these guys are from the lower levels. FCS, some of the right. guys are not going to... And, Skip, I remember going to the uh, the East-West Shrine game, and I was one of the few the Division II guys going, and I was I didn't go to Michigan, and I, so I didn't have scouts at every True. practice. Yeah. So to get in front of somebody... You did have one thing on your side. I had a big brother. I had a big brother. Go ahead. But but I had to do it because they're like, oh, yeah, that's their little brother, but he in Green Bay, and they're not going to trade him right. to us, so I want to know what this, <laughs> what this guy can do. But it gives these guys an opportunity to get NFL scouts in mm -hmm. front of them. And as Plex said, it also gives them an opportunity, guys that played in the league, right. that can, they can talk technique, they can talk, okay, this is what we did in college. Yeah. Okay, Plex can say, no, nah, but in the NFL, yeah. you can't run it like that. Because these guys are too good, and you tip that rod off. So it, it's great, and I agree with you. I, the time and the patience that it would take to coach. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm. Mr. Burris, take us back to that magic moment, that Super Bowl week of 42 mm. in Phoenix, Arizona. And I don't remember which day it was, Tuesday or Wednesday. Somebody asked you about the game you were about to play against Tom Brady and company, right. and you made a prediction. You said you were going to win the game 23-17. to 17. Do you remember that moment? Uh -huh. I do remember the moment yeah. because we got off the bus and checked into the hotel, and I just happened to be walking casually through the hotel. To, this uh, would be yeah. which day? This was probably this was Tuesday. Tuesday, because we had, we had just checked yeah. in on Tuesday, and I walked into the hotel, and this guy just walks by me, and he was like, "Are you guys going to win?" I'm like, "I'm like, of course. The score is going to be 23-17." And I thought nothing about it. Was he a media member? Or and he just happened to be a uh -huh. part of the national media. Uh -huh. <laughs> and just I woke up the hang. next day, and my phone was buzzing and ringing. And they're like, man, what did you do? I said, <laughs> I didn't do anything. And I turned the TV on, and it was like international headline. But, uh -huh. hey, I projected 23-17, and then the score ended up being 17-14. But they didn't even get to so, 17. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> But the punchline of the story is then, of course, Tom Brady was asked about Plax's prediction, yeah. and he laughed out loud and said, oh, we're only going to score 17, and he yeah. made a joke about at least he could have made it 45 to 42 to mm. give us some right. credit because that was the 2007 mm -hmm. Patriots right. offense, which had averaged 37 mm -hmm. points a game. Mm -hmm. So how fearful were you going to practice the next day or whatever? Did you? Um, we weren't fearful at all yeah. because but we had... how about had... you with your teammates? Did anybody... Oh, no, we weren't fearful at all. Okay. I mean, everybody just kind of rallied behind me, and, I, and our mindset was, listen, we just paid these guys a few weeks we ago in week 16. Yeah. And our mindset was, you know, don't turn the football over right. and don't beat ourselves. And we had one interception, and they ended up kicking a field goal when we threw that interception, mm -hmm. and they ended up winning that game by three points. Yep. So, and you had, it had been 38-35 to 35 at your place in the right. final regular season game, right. which gave you a feel for, wait a second, we can hang with them, right? Yeah. Because we, we really didn't have, we, we we didn't have to play our starters because mm -hmm. we were already had already mm -hmm. clinched going out the wild card going to play Tampa Bay, and our mindset was hey we can go out here and play and play this week sixteen game and and and, and try to win. Mm -hmm. I mean we wouldn't take in the back seat to anybody. Mm -hmm. So Brady goes down and scores and it's fourteen to ten with a couple minutes left. Right. Hit Randy Moss as you would predict he would. 
Right. And then all of a sudden, Eli pulls off the, what, what I consider the hey, luckiest why, why play. Why do you keep luckiest calling it luck, Skip? Well, well, <laughs> because Every time guess I what? sit with you because on this table, he, man, you Eli keep calling it luck. It he agreed with luck, me. Man. Where were you on the helmet catch play? To well, I was actually on the backside, you know, yeah. clearing out on the backside of okay. the team. I just seen them rip back and throw the ball, and I was like, no. No. In the middle of the field. In the middle of the field. And David Tyree ran the wrong route. Yeah. So. Did he? <laughs> Did Absolutely, he? man. Where was he supposed route. to go? I don't know, but it, <laughs> wasn't it? he wasn't in the right place. Okay. And it, then what was your reaction when it sort of stuck in his helmet? I actually couldn't believe it. I actually didn't see the helmet part of it until on the Jumbotron, because mm-hmm. I, could, I couldn't see the actual helmet catch where I was at. But when I saw it, I, was, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. You're like, yeah, we're going to win the game yeah. now. Yeah. If he catches the ball on yeah. his helmet yeah. and, and Rodney can't get it out <laughs> and it doesn't yeah. touch the ground, oh, yeah, we're going to win yeah, this. Yeah, Asante Zanamu drops a, he uh, drops drops an a pick, interception, which yeah. he does not do. He does not do. And we catch that ball. And, and I tell everybody that Rodney Harrison, I think, was one postseason interception from being the all-time oh. leader in, in interception. Right. So... He went for the football. He did. I think if, if Rodney Harrison mm-hmm. just runs underneath, runs underneath David mm-hmm. Tyree, he doesn't make that play. Right. But Rodney Harrison wanted that pick. And then a couple plays later, you do not drop the ball. You catch it. Do you remember which route you ran? Uh, it was just a, it was just an X fade. It was against bomb blitz. Yeah, it, it was cover zero. I just couldn't <laughs> believe that but it, they would put me in a situation at the end of the game and and and, and, and go zero coverage. Do hmm. you remember it, who was on you? Oh, yeah, Ellis Hobbs. How, yeah. how can I ever forget? And, and Rodney <laughs> Harrison actually there. says, and uh, we did a, uh, a, a film directed by Spike Lee called The Greatest Catch Ever. And they went to uh, Rodney Harrison's house and interviewed him about, this, about, about that play. Hmm. And Rodney Harrison actually went up to the late Junior Seau and said, hey, man, we got to check out of this defense. Really? And Junior hmm. Seau was like, man, I can't check out of it. Hmm. Because on, Rod, on your Rod, play. Yeah, and Rodney okay. Harrison knew that. It was it was single cover zero, and I was watching film when Ellis Howard was all week, and he, he backs him to the uh, to the goal line and stops his feet. And I said, "Man, listen, expecting the ball to come out, yeah. think you're gonna run the slant." Yeah, most people, you know, yeah. yeah. If if he stops his feet on, on the goal line, like I've been watching on film for the last two weeks, I'm gonna just run. Did clean you make line. eye contact with Eli before the snap? No, when I broke the huddle, he grabbed me. He, <laughs> said, he, he said, "Hey, if, if you get single coverage, I'm throwing it." And I was like, all right. I said, "Man, listen, they're not gonna single cover me right now." Hmm. And it was worse than single coverage. It was zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cool that's to think z- about. Zero. <laughs> well, we, that's zero coverage, Skip. Yeah. Let people let know we call it bomb blitz zero coverage. Yeah. There's nobody in the middle of the field. No help. Everybody's yeah. man to man. They're coming. Yeah. And that's why Rodney wanted to check out of it because in a situation like that, you don't want to make the throw so this the throw is so easy. Mm-hmm. Plex is six five. Ellis Hobbs is five eight and a half, five nine. Yeah. And yeah. so even if you make it a jump ball situation, yeah. it doesn't favor him. Now, Plex ran the uh, uh, ran the X fade. He can run the slant. He stopped his feet anticipating the ball's coming right now. Mm. But once he stopped his feet, he couldn't restart again because Plex had already started it into his fade. So now it's a touchdown. It's over. Yeah, so he's basically using the sideline as, as a man. Yep. And, and there's no inside help. How surprised are you looking back at that game that that same number 12 for New England is still at it <laughs> in Foxborough and going to Kansas City? I'm not surprised at all, mm. to be honest with you. I've been playing against Tom Brady uh, uh, at Michigan State in Michigan since 1998. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and I've been watching him perform these miracles and go, go out and perform at a legend at a legendary level for for the last 20 years. And you know, he just has a chip on his shoulder that that uh you can't knock it off. Mm-hmm. Eight eight straight AFC championship game. That's unbelievable. That's a, hey, those things don't happen in this business. No. Eight AFC championship games in a row. Can you see him playing till 45 as he says he will? I believe him. I believe him because they will find a way to protect Tom Brady. If you protect him, I don't, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. And me and, him, me, me and Tom Brady was in the same draft in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the last two guys playing for my draft out of 255 wow. players. We were the last two players and he's still playing. <laughs> Still playing. Can you imagine that? <laughs> He's still playing. And the quarterback who threw you that football to win that game, Super Bowl 42, is still playing for the New York Football Giants. He is. And you Not very well, I might add. I knew that was coming. What, what did you Throw see from Eli this year, and what do you think about his chances next year? 
Uh, from from what I'm hearing and from what I understand, he's going to come back and play another year. Uh, that's what I'm hearing and that's what I understand. But it, it has to. They have to find a way to protect them one on, uh, first and foremost. Because if you can't protect them, then he can't. He he can't go out and perform. Right. I mean, we we all see that and Saquon Barkley. I mean, who 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 knew this guy was going to be that good? Oof. Odell Beckham. We got to get him back on the field healthy. They have generational talent, but but at the quarterback position, we just got to find a way to to solidify that position, uh, protect them. And my my mindset is if Dwayne Haskins is available at, at the sixth pick, we got to take. You got to really? go there. What about if Kyler Murray is available? I, I say, I, hey, I say Dwayne Haskins is, is a better fit for that offense. And and I can't completely disagree with what with Coach Shermer's old school sure. drop back conventional. Dwayne would be a better fit for them, but listen, if you put Kyler with Saquon and Odell, whew, yeah. New, New York, York would it, go crazy. Yeah, the, the the college game is slowly but surely becoming the pro. Game. It is. It, I, I mean, um, I mean, case in case in point, Lamar Jackson. You, you look at the Baltimore yeah. offense before uh, Lamar was implemented in that offense. It was a drop back offense, <laughs> yeah. under center, drop back offense, and, and a week later. It's a whole new system. <laughs> the all zone read. That doesn't happen. No. A whole new system was was put in when, when, when Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. came into that offense. Mm-hmm. So uh, it may happen. Kyler Murray may end up at the uh, New York Giants, but from a passing standpoint, with you know Sterling and and Evan and mm-hmm. and Odell, ask. You have some familiarity with Pittsburgh. What do you think about the situation that's going on with AB Antonio Brown? <sighs> it's, a, it's a lot of things going on behind the scenes, uh, from what I understand. Um, I actually talked to Antonio last night. Did you? And um, just trying to, you know, see where he's at mentally, you know, just trying to tell him to stay sane. And it's a lot of, you know, pieces, you know, people are saying this and that. And I'm just telling him, hey, man, you know, just stay sane. And, you know, he's going back and him, him and Emmanuel are going back and forth. They are. Twitter, mm-hmm. like, those guys used to be so tight. And you, see, and, you, and you hate to see those kind of things going on. And uh, Mr. Rooney, I guess Mr. Rooney came out, as, came out and said he, he didn't see him in training camp right. in August. So I don't know what's going to happen. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. The standard is the standard. I, I had the opportunity to, to play there seven years, and they're, they're not going to bend for anybody. So, so gut feeling he's gone next year? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know where they go offensively if he's not there. What you mean where they go? They got Juju. Mm. Jay Washington, they drafted him. You know where they going. You just said the standard is the standard. They going to move on. The standard is the standard. But I don't know. I, don't, I, I just don't know. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be there or not. If mm. Mr. Rooney says he's not, then he's not. But you just don't know. And doesn't feel good to hear that. <laughs> 